So we already have AES Crypt installed, and what we're going to do next is I'm going to show you how to encrypt and then decrypt a test file. So what I've done is I've created a test Word document on my desktop, and I have that right here. I'm going to, to encrypt the file, I'm going to right click on the file, and I'm going to choose AES Encrypt. When I do that, I'm prompted to enter a password. Now keep in mind that the longer the password and also the more variables that you use in the password, the more secure your file will be. If you use a uh, password as your password, of course, it's going to be very easy for somebody to hack the password and then gain access to your encrypted file, which then defeats the purpose of actually using encryption software. So in this instance, I'm going to use a, uh, just a, a quick password of eight characters, and I'm going to type that. Then I'm going to enter that password again, and I'm going to click on OK. When I do that, I end up with my AES encrypted file on my desktop. So I can see that the icon has changed. It now says AES Crypt Encrypted Data File. And this is my Word document. You can see my Word document, the original one was 11.1 .1 kilobytes. My new document is 11.4 kilobytes. So one thing to keep in mind, especially if you're going to be testing encryption and decryption on your own machine, is that you can't decrypt the file onto the desktop or at the same location as the original file because when you do, you will receive an error message. Let me show that to you. So if I double click on my AES encrypted file, I'm requested to enter my password, which I do, and then I click on OK. Once I do that, I receive the error message saying that the system is unable to open the output file because the file already exists. So I'm going to click on OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my test file and I'm going to throw that in my recycle bin. So now when I click on my AES encrypted file and I enter my password and click on OK, then I end up with my original file on my desktop. When I look at that, I can see it's a Microsoft Word document, and the size is, again, the 11.1 .1 kilobytes. So now I have actually my original document and my AES document on my desktop. Now, when you are sending an AES encrypted file via email, uh, specifically as an attachment, one thing to keep in mind is that the person who is receiving the encrypted file on the other side needs to also have AES Crypt installed on their system and they will need the password to be able to open the file. Uh, word of caution, don't send the password via plain text email because again you're defeating the purpose of using encryption. You want to make sure that they receive that by some other methods that, that are secure. So thank you for working with me today and learning how to encrypt and decrypt a file using AES Crypt.